Hi, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to day two of our week three of A Life Connects virtual event. So hope your, uh, your day is off to a great start. So today we will be bringing you um, a part two to a zero waste chat. So last week we had a chat with um, Jasmine Tuan. Um, if you've missed out on that session, you can always head on to our YouTube and Facebook page for the recording. So um, last week with Jasmine Tuan, we have um, spoken to her a little bit about, you know, just the um, general zero waste living, how to do it, tips and tricks and the basics. So we thought today we are going to dive a little bit deeper and go and focus on um, the topic of sustainable fashion. So how do we navigate this? How do you be stylish and still remain sustainable? So we'll... We are going to have those questions answered today um, and we've also got just the right person to be um, sharing her story with us and sharing tips and tricks. Uh, so today we have Melissa Tan who herself is a zero waste activist. Um, not only that but she's also a model, a TV host and a producer. So she has used um, her influence in the social media scene and entertainment industry uh, for a great cause, uh, which is a zero waste movement. So it is definitely our absolute privilege and honor to have her here today. Um, let's welcome in Melissa Tan. Hi hey everyone. Hey Irina. Hey, how are you? How have you been? I'm, I'm good. Um... I've really been enjoying MCO and staying in all the time. Like that's my secret, like joy. Um, not so secret actually. I, I see a lot of people echoing the same feelings as well. Mm, yeah, I mean, has it? I mean, since if you have you always like from because I know that a lot of people have also changed their, you know, their feelings or like how they feel has changed from week one to week two to now. Like you know, week week six. I went on week six. Probably. Yeah, like, have, have you always um, loved it from the first week onward, like, till now? Yeah, I think it was, like, the permission to do everything you've always wanted to do. Um, I it's, it's kind of like a weird social experiment for everyone, isn't it? Like, what? how would you react in these conditions and how would you use your time? I mean, everyone has reacted in different ways, of course, but it, it also was permission for me to be able to sit home and not feel guilty, like not feel like, oh, I have to go out and hustle. I have to go out and, you know, yeah. um, it, it was it was a very nice break. That's good. Um, so like we, I know like MCO has definitely affected uh, uh, many industries and obviously because you are also a host now, right? I mean, you pre you, you do events and, and things like that. So, has it really, I mean, in terms of career and in terms of jobs, has it ever, I mean, are you, because you seem to be like really happy as well in this case. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, okay, I'm yeah, doing something now. But um, yeah, are you affected sort of in any way or are you fearful of like what's to come? I mean, I think the, 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 the rising thought on everyone's mind is financial, right? And especially with events and stuff like that, those have been stuck, those started to cancel already in February. So even then you could see all your pipelines like slowly collapsing yeah. <laughs> and you're like, uh, the good thing is like, because, um, yeah, because I'm a zero waste practitioner, um, I've also amassed savings from that lifestyle and I am also a minimalist. So a lot of it became, it allowed me a sense of peace that I think I wouldn't have if I was still in my old consumer mindset. Um, so I, I'm, I'm really grateful for that and I know not everyone gets to enjoy that. Um, so I, I just got to really, um, yeah, be grateful and use what I have um, for good luck. So that's why I kind of want to share all the time about how I live my life as well, because um, mm -hmm. this brings you back so much benefits um, that you you don't really know until you're put in a position like this. Um, for example, like like not being, like not having debt, like not having, um, mm -hmm. you know, so yeah. Yeah, it's giving you freedom in like other other areas of your life as well. Like you said, financial freedom, right? Sort of, if you want to put it like that way. Actually, that was one of my questions. Oh, okay. Let's get to it. <laughs> yeah, like, so that's good that you cleared that out like from the very beginning. Because, um, yeah, because I would assume that I was wondering if it would, it would cost more money or, you know, would you save up more? Because certain things, I don't know, like certain things maybe you need to get that we're not aware of that you need to get if you're not using, yeah, I don't know, like 
yeah so but that's good to know that uh, we'll get into that a little bit uh, yeah get into that like, a little later um but yeah maybe like uh it'd be great to also have an introduction uh to everyone of like your story like how you started of course um all of us know you as yeah you know um the contestant in asia's next top model i think um i assume that's how you started uh but yeah maybe it'll be cool to also um allow our audience to get to know you a little bit better on how you get into the entertainment industry and social media scene. Oh, <laughs> um, this is a story that I haven't really told for some time because it's, it's, it's been a while. I think I've been in this for about five years now. That's how, that's how lot. time <laughs> passes really quickly. And I was always like an aspiring model since I was a young kid and um, I never figured out how to make money out of it. And even though I really wanted to do it, I went through the usual route of going to, going to school, going to college, going to university. Um, I did actuarial studies and then I came out back to Malaysia and I still couldn't figure out how to make money from modeling. And um, I went into consulting. Um, and I did it for like a good like three, three to four years. So I was like corporate mode and everything. Um, and at the same time, that dream of becoming a model kept getting smaller and smaller as mm -hmm. I get, I got older and older. Mm -hmm. um, and but I still tried, and I still threw my hat in every time because I, I think a lot of us grew up with Asia's Next Top Model, uh, America's Next Top Model, and um, we we all enjoyed that format greatly. And I've always um, wanted to get on, and um, yeah, I just kept trying every year. And then when I finally got in. It was, it's like it fell from heaven or something. Um, the stars just aligned and, and and that's how I started. I think that's when I got like, okay, this is the big door that opened for me. Mm. Have you always been, I mean, have you always been zero waste? Like, right, I know that now um, you are obviously, uh, you know, um, using your influence for such a great cause, right? Like in social media and all that, like, you know, you're always posting about your, your lifestyle, but has that always been your lifestyle from the very beginning? Like when you were a kid or, or did it just, I don't know, along the way after the next top model? Like I've always been an environmentalist because I'm a huge animal lover. So mm -hmm. a lot of it is education right and awareness once you know something you can't unknow it so we all started the same right like our first interaction with being environmentally friendly was paper lama man uh, we yeah. know okay there is value to waste there's but only paper lama man keeps um, um, um comes and comes and collects it so yeah. we we grow with what is accessible to us and what we learn of so it starts with paper lama man later on it becomes like plastic bottles um and then one day i i met uh claire sensolot from um the hive um and and then she spoke about zero waste living and i was like i have been like the most environmental girl my whole life and it never occurred to me that the first thing you can do is refuse it so it kind of like hmm. this is you know suddenly everything like went off like all the light bulbs went off because before that also like i've always been this i you know how during like school you have um you'd have summer job um mm -hmm. during like Everyone goes and like becomes a waiter yeah, right. or like goes and work in a fashion store oh, for like that's one that's month. That's <laughs> so I, I always did because I love I love coffee. So I did like I was I was always working as a waiter. Um, one of my first jobs was in a franchise, a coffee franchise, and you know how they make those ice blended drinks, and then um, it's it's a plastic cup, right? Yeah. So when we see it as ourselves, like just say if today I have an ice blended drink, I'll be like, oh okay, this is one ice blended drink, and then you throw it away. Yeah. When because I worked in the store, I saw the what 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 volume really of waste we really create mm -hmm. because now it was trash bags full of like plastic cups going into the trash because all F and B practically almost all F and B do not recycle. Um, so I was like a 15 year old girl, like taking out the trash and like washing them because you have to wash your recyclables, washing them, stacking them, drying them. And my ma manager was like pissed. <laughs> but that's what I did every day. <laughs> but I was like, no, I mean, I'll deal with this. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll bring it home. I'll bring it 
to the recycling center. I'll deal with it. It's fine. I'm not going to bother you. So that's what I did. Like I, every day, I bring wow. like bags of like recycling to the recycling center because I could not live with the fact bad. that it was going into the trash, into the landfill. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this was like the whole. But when I found zero waste living, it was like yes, let's go mm. now. Like I'm a, I'm awake now. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, that was that. So basically, that was like the moment of realize sort of like a moment of realization for you. Like when you were working in um that coffee joint, that yeah. like, oh, this is the uh, and so that must be you were a teenager then, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, so you started off really really young. Like I mean, like you said, I guess you all the while you know have a care or have a heart for Earth or like our planet, right? And yeah, that's amazing to hear. Like because I guess like a lot of um stories that I hear are people who sort of like adopted that. You know, like along the way as they are older, um, I think even for myself, like I never really uh cared about the. I mean, no, really, like if I was being, if I'm being honest, no, yeah, like I've never, really, I've never really given it much thought. I guess like I just like throw lah, like whatever and stuff, and I didn't really think like oh, this uh, planet that we live in needs protecting. And also, I think maybe because like growing up, like those years, it wasn't very much. There wasn't much awareness. There wasn't much like, oh, you know, global warming, and you know, this is what we're doing to 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 the planet. I mean, at least I'm not aware of that, lah. I'm not sure that time got not, but yeah. So I felt like, yeah, it is not something that is natural for a lot of people. But for you, I guess it kind of like, yeah, it was in you already since you were younger. Were you from like a family who also um? Cares about like the environment as well because I think upbringing is also one of the factors for a lot of people, right? I mean, we grew up in a very uh, conscientious um, family, but it right. didn't exactly extend to the environment. So it's usually just that you're considerate towards other people, that you're considerate right. towards you know everyone around you, no matter like how how you know. From from the gardener to the from the road sweeper to the CEO, you must treat everyone the same. We yeah. we have that kind of mindset in our family, and I think like it's about drawing the connection because I, I totally agree with you. A lot of awareness is like it, it's like uh, actually like how come no one really talk about it or like yeah. it sometimes can seem very far away. Like what do you mean like a turtle died like in South China Sea or something? You know, it's like it feels yeah. like very very far away to the the decisions that we make every day so um at the same time it, it's it's the care for people it's the care for other animals it's the care for 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 the earth around us that that motivates this kind of behavior la. because once you draw the line like oh because i did this thing this means it affected all these mm-hmm. other people and animals and 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 environment because of this one thing so we have to draw the line between cause and impact yeah. so that it, that can that can you know stir what what how we decide how we choose how we consume instead of yeah. like you know feeling helpless about the whole situation because it, it's it, it, like a lot of people have been talking about the environment more and more in the past few years right and it, it is great gaining awareness especially with the climate crisis that's happening and all the climate refugees that 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 has that has been impacted because of this um so now it's kind of having to draw the line between here and there yeah oh, i mean like you were talking about how uh claire meeting claire has um meeting claire has really um just you know help you to inspire you to start doing uh going into zero waste living and so in terms of like fashion was that like the same like you know the moment you thought like zero waste and then you kind of adopted it into like your your, your lifestyle like your clothes and your wardrobe and stuff because i'm pretty sure as a model and like you know and influence and all that i'm pretty sure you get uh, i don't know being in the fashion industry i'm pretty sure you'll get loads and loads of I don't know either sponsored clothing or you have this you know you you need to look a certain way you know in public and stuff like so did that happen like concurrently as so Claire and- I met I started zero waste living about three and a, three years ago or three and a half years ago when I met Claire um that time she just kind of newly opened uh, uh the hive as well um because she moved from Hong Kong um and then. What happened was I actually discovered all the benefits of of fashion, fashion w- with lower impact. Before that, um, you know how every time we go on 
a holiday, like say you go on a one week holiday or a, or a beach holiday, and then everyone like packs their wardrobe, in, their entire wardrobe into their their um, nice. luggage because they're gonna have like three OOTDs in every every day, and and um you know they they've curated this entire like beautiful um grid for their social media in their mm. head already. Yeah. Um, and then when I was taking a trip with my friends. Uh, I, I was that girl as well. I was like lugging luggage like a mad person um, for holidays. And yeah. and then um, I got bit by the shopping bug as well when I was in uni because I was, uh, I, I studied in Australia and um, they like the sales are crazy and, and I, I wasted so much time in the mall just buying shit. Um, but then I discovered on, on a trip with my friends, um, we went, it wasn't it was just a really simple trip but for some reason i underpacked severely i think i was not paying attention so mm -hmm. i think for like a four-day trip i had like three outfits or something what it's like barely any clothes i'm like huh, how come my my luggage so empty <laughs> it's like this is one outfit per day yeah it's like, how, how, like less than one outfit per day actually yeah. how come my how come so empty i don't know how i packed that time and I yeah. realized how liberating it was. It felt so free. I and I it was an accident. So yeah. I felt so happy during that trip because I didn't think about like, okay, then what's my next outfit? And then what's my next outfit? <laughs> and then I I just enjoyed myself with my friends and I didn't wow. care how I looked. I I eat, like at some point I had to look at my friend like, hey, can you like borrow me your shorts? <laughs> I ran out already. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. And since that day, right, and I also noticed like how light my bag was and I wasn't like trying to lug it across the airport and, and across all these things. So then from that from that that point onwards, I always traveled like super light. It always became a challenge to how I could travel even lighter than before. Um, um, it was like, uh, yeah, okay, this is the amount and, and, and how do I make my luggage even lighter? So my, like overweight luggage didn't become overweight luggage wasn't a problem for me anymore which was really yeah. great yeah. um and then because after ages next top model i became a, a traveling model right so usually mm -hmm. what happens with models is you take sorry my hair's bothering me <laughs> so what usually what happens with models is you take three month contracts in different different countries every every three months and then you just move on to the next country and then you work in that country and then you move on so usually models would leave home for for like a period of time usually like if they're from brazil if they're from russia because mm -hmm. the, the trip is really far they usually leave for a year at a time and then go back to their family at like christmas or something um i i obviously didn't stay home stay away for very long i just did three months and i can come back to malaysia already because i i, I didn't go very far mm -hmm. um but but then that was like a second opportunity for me to live from uh because for three months you didn't go home you just lived from your whatever was in your suitcase mm -hmm. and very rightly how you said just now models need to look good they need to make a really great impression they need to look really stylish because yeah. they, it's all about first impressions as well when you when you walk into a casting mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be like super complicated um you just have to really understand your body and how to show it off in the best way possible um and sometimes that is without the bells and whistles you know, it's without all the fluffy, like, 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 let's go to the and like sequins everywhere. It isn't about that, right? So then that's how, that's how I, I, I discovered the beauty of a capsule wardrobe because I had this amount of clothing, nothing else. I didn't add anything on it because if you did, you make your luggage overweight after that. Um, so, so that was like a trial period of how I was going to operate going forward as well. Um, yeah, you touched on capsule wardrobe. I actually have and heard of that term but yeah what actually is flexible because i have not like i think i'm not like google and really like find out why it is but so what, what what do you mean by capsule wardrobe so a capsule wardrobe is the the antithesis of everything of the way we are consuming now so imagine everyone's wardrobe right now uh last year january marie kondo came out with yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with, the, with, with, the, with her netflix show right and then everyone decut it your wardrobe mm -hmm. because they they just kind of looked at it and mm -hmm. it always felt like they had nothing to wear mm -hmm. that's why people kept buying but it's just that it's buried in all of that volume in in your wardrobe there was just so much um 
it's impossible to even find anything. It's hard to keep a clear mind of how you're going to put the best look possible when this is just stuff to the brim. Um, so everyone con Murray during January last in 2019. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure. But the thing is, after that, it I, I'm sure like one year later, like now it's MCO and everybody was home and that's what they did again. They con married again because over the course of a year, whatever hard work that they did to con Marie to like, wow, this is my wardrobe now, it just expanded again. Now it filled all that space full of clothes that they kind of really noticed that, oh, I don't really like this, do I? Oh, I don't like, why did I buy this, you know? Yeah. Um, so the idea behind a capsule wardrobe is very tied to minimalism as well. Understanding mm -hmm. what brings you value and curating it to a point where each piece has its place. So it, it's not a magic number that people aim for, but, but people do try to kind of put a, a, a lofty, uh, a loose boundary for themselves to see how they can build a wardrobe which completely makes sense to them. Each piece is valued, each piece is used well, and each piece makes sense with all the other pieces as well so that you can gain the most value out of the least number of items. Um, so that's that's how um, that that in 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 that way, um, mm -hmm. surprisingly, people what people usually say is that okay, so I'm like a big fan of the minimalist, right? Um, and what they always like to say is that you will know who are the minimalists in the room because they are the best dressed people in the room. Oh, that is because that. yeah. They are usually the best dressed people in the room. The capsule wardrobe people are usually the best dressed people in the room because every day they are wearing their favorite outfit. There is no like okay. half pass like, oh, today is like know. less on one, <laughs> you know. There's so always like, like oh, okay mm -hmm. you know. So because yeah, basically, it's to dress your best at every at every occasion, Because like, you love it, it. Does that come from that? Like, because you love everything that you have. Yeah, you like you are really just putting out your best. Is that what you mean? Yes. If they've allowed something into their capsule wardrobe, it mm -hmm. is something that they really like, that they really get mm -hmm. a lot of value and use out of. Instead of like, oh, this one was 50% off, so I buy lah. Oh, this one I bought because I was bored, so I buy lah. Or oh, this one was I bought because I saw that other influencer wear. So kind of nice what? So I also want to wear lah. And then you yeah. wear once, then you like, oh, actually, I don't really like it that much. Yeah. <laughs> She's quite uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. I mean, have you met, I mean, you're talking about capsule wardrobe, have you met anyone who like, I mean, I'm pretty sure there are like a lot of people who like, no, I love this piece. I love this piece. No, yeah, I think this this is, this goes to this. And by the time you know it, your capsule wardrobe is probably just the same or you like maybe deducted 20% of it. I mean, does that happen? I'm pretty, I'm sure, right? Like some people... So what I, I totally agree with you, like to start off, it can be quite, it takes time. Like for me, it took time as well. You know, I didn't like magically knew what my capsule wardrobe is. The, the, the thing about trying to build your own capsule wardrobe is not to rush into it. It is not to go and con Marie your entire wardrobe and to build your perfect capsule wardrobe right away. It is a process that you have to go through, that you have to take time with and be patient with the process because it is you learning at every step of the way what kind of outfits look good on you, what kind of outfits um, can serve you in many, many different scenarios and what kind of outfits make you feel the best that you can. Um, yeah. Think about your wardrobe right now. Can you pick out like, if the entire wardrobe were to burn down, could you pick out three outfits that you really want to save? Probably. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's definitely more than three. But yeah, if you are, I don't know, it's, it's quite a lot. I think it'll take some time to pick out three. <laughs> yeah, see, even like to pick out three, it would take some time, isn't it? So yeah. I would say do not rush into a capsule wardrobe. Do not try and achieve that in a day because it is not going to be achieved in a day. So just be, the first thing you can do is to stop buying and stop to buying. rediscover your wardrobe. Because uh, I'm sure everyone's very familiar with the fast fashion industry and all the, the horrendous impacts that it has on on the environment and the human uh, the human cost behind it. Um, yeah. So just some stats here for you. Uh, McKinsey says that more than half of fast fashion items are thrown away in less than a year, 
and I'm sure within our within you know even your audience and 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 us you know I'm sure we have a few pieces we can think of in our head that we actually did like discard completely within one year of buying it. Um, and in 2015, greenhouse gas emissions from textile production globally was 1.2 billion tons of CO2 equivalent. And that's more than the emissions of all international flights and maritime shipping combined. So think about the scale of pollution that the fashion industry um, impacts onto the environment. So the first thing we can do is stop that demand because it we're not going to find a way into a more sustainable wardrobe if we keep we never turn off the tap. Yeah. Right? It will just it will just confuse the process even further. Um, so what we can do is is first we stop buying, second we re rediscover our wardrobe. So how many times do you you go through your wardrobe and you're like, ah, oh, I haven't worn this in two yeah. years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I bought this and then like I forgot it existed and then okay. I I did an audit of my wardrobe uh I don't know, like maybe a year ago. Hmm. And I found like I think 50 pairs of jeans. I, I don't wow. even really I don't even wear jeans and, and keep in mind I have not bought anything new in three years, yeah. Um so yeah. yeah. I'm like, where did these come from? First of all, like, how careless was I being? You know, none of these jeans make me feel good. None mm -hmm. of like, but why did I let them into my life in the first place? So we've got to really step back yeah. and question how we consume fashion, because yeah. fashion, unfortunately, our consumption patterns around it has been very, um, like, over consumption of it. First of all, and a lot less thought, a lot less thought that goes into it because of fast fashion um, um, and also social media. So fashion is something that people use to explore and, and express their creativity and their personality, right? Yeah. But a lot of times what we're seeing is that we're becoming replicates of each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just going with like the hurt. Yeah. Like first someone wears jeans with holes, then suddenly the next day everyone wears jeans with holes. Yeah, yeah. And so maybe every, like in the intention of why why we do certain things, probably. Yeah. Like intention, like is it to you know, checking the intention, like is it to sort of you know, follow what everyone else is doing or yeah. I think there's a lot of um. I feel like just listening. I feel like it's actually it's more than just the environment. Sometimes when you get into the lifestyle, actually you realize a lot of things about yourself, about like intention, why you do certain things, why you have to buy then you realize that wait a minute, am I like, you know, being insecure or wanting to be, you know, in with like, you know, the crowd or things like that. And so you kind of discover a lot of things about yourself, right? I'm pretty sure in the process. It sounds like it because when you hear about it, it's actually really much very much an internal thing. Yeah. So like with zero waste living, sustainable fashion, um, and, and you're changing your approach to fashion, it's not, um, I think a lot of people might think like zero waste living is like, oh, because you're, you are you want to be good, you want to save the environment. A lot of it is saving yourself. <laughs> it's like a lot of it is, is, is breaking yourself free of this consumption cycle that we're trapped in. Um, mm. It's like a trigger that triggers like, every time an email drops into your inbox declaring 20% sale, uh, across the the, the e-commerce platform, sure. Wait, one hour you're already one hour you're trying to find something to buy. Okay, okay, yeah, no, no, just, even though <laughs> you like you just like cannot tahan, right? You just have to have to gain some value from it. Yeah, you cannot lose out. Cannot lose out. After yeah. so over already, <laughs> and well, we lost not... like one hour of our lives just mindlessly mm. scrolling, trying to find something to buy. We we don't actually want something. We are trying to find something to buy. Yeah, yes. Oh my gosh, yeah. I think uh, we're all like victims of that. Um, Just want to ask also, because you were saying that like stop buying, right? It's the first step. Like, mm. but it is, I don't know, it's definitely much easier said than done. Like, I mean, is there like a thought process? Like, okay, for example, if you see um, like something that, I don't know, like you really like, or you know how sometimes like you say, you know, online shopping, you'll be like, and sometimes I like things, you want to get this, you want to get this, you want to get that and all that. But like, how do you stop yourself? Is there a thought process? Do you think about like effects or you think about like, is there any way to stop ourselves from just consuming and from just buying like 
blindly. Okay. Um, first, first thing is, it is not. I really like this phrase that I that I always hear the, the minimalists say. It is it is fifty percent off if you buy it, but it's a hundred percent off if you don't. Mm, that's a good. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. So you're not saving money from buying these things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's one one thing we have to we have to kind of realize as well. Yeah. Like that's how we we kind of try and cut off the trigger of like I know I cannot lose out because a lot of it is a reaction, right? I cannot lose out. I need to get this fifty percent off, right? Yeah. Um. Not next day I will pay more. <laughs> Actually, you could have just not paid anything and not buy it. Um. Second of all is to. What I find really helps me, even in zero waste living and in sustainable fashion, is to think about the impact. Um, for example, I don't eat meat, and how I stopped eating meat was because I exposed myself to all those videos of animal farming, yeah, and the intense cruelty that happens there. So even before I can pick up a piece of chicken, I lost my appetite already. Yeah, you think about yeah that video that you just watched. Um, so, okay, so just wanted to sorry i just wanted to touch yeah. on that before i forget because i remembered um just just a personal um personal story which i think i should be ashamed of saying this please please do i i watched this i watched like a video where they were um, it was it was really bad after, like uh it was like um them trying to like obviously um uh uh like uh but, not butcher they, it it was it was like i think they were cows and all that and then they were trying to like obviously you know cut off the neck or something but they were lining these cows up and and you can I, you can see right from the expression like they know it is coming like they know that they're going to be like slaughtered right and and uh that just sort of like brought up a lot of emotion in me so after that video i actually stopped me all together before, but no that's the sad thing for only about like um two weeks or something, one week, one week plus. But after that, I find myself like, I think I was like, oh, I cannot tahan really. And then um, it became less and less vivid in my memory, what I saw mm -hmm. in the video. So yeah, I don't know. Cause you were saying that, yeah. I mean, I, I was- I completely empathize with that. You're right. It, the, the memory gets smaller and the impact gets smaller, right? Yeah. Um, but I think we can also recognize why that happens. Um, it is part of it desensitization to to the to, to the things and it's we are actively trying to block and actively trying to ignore it as well um mm -hmm. so that we can we can continue to, to do the things that we like to do right um it is also because one one reason could also be that we haven't replaced it yeah so okay. for example if you every day eat chicken rice now you cannot eat chicken rice you can only eat rice in the demonly i think i also don't want to eat la. <laughs> you know <laughs> so restricted yeah but if you say if you build like a beautiful like veggie salad with like really or like not even veggie salad i love vegetable curry la, okay so if i started eating vegetable curry i think i can forget about me completely because i love vegetable curry you know if you replace it with something else it it also gets easier to 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 not fall into those other things that can harm yeah okay like so basically finding a way to sort of um substitute that la. like uh, a substitute that you also love so that you won't miss on what you are, I guess, cutting out. It's, it's consuming better lor, and consuming yeah. in, in a way that, that, that really helps you as well. Lor. Like you have to, it, it is different for each person. Um, some people will like like fake meat a lot. I wouldn't, for example, I, I needed to, I need other things to kind of excite me. So it's everyone has their own kind of discovery behind that one. Hmm. Each to its own. Um, yeah, so the fashion industry is the same. Also, consuming your fashion would be the same as well. Yeah, so do you stop like shopping in like Zara, Topshop, like I mean, obviously all the fast, fast uh, fashion brands. Uh huh. Yeah, I mean because I guess like uh, I think what a lot of people would probably want to understand or know, even myself, like how how do we start? We did stop buying. So how long do we stop buying for? Like, okay. Yeah, and then, like this, I guess simple tips on like how do we get started if we are already consuming so much now. It's, because as you say, you know, it's step by step, right, and not like go full on at one go. Yeah. Okay, so here's what I find really helps. 
Um, this is something that I usually cover in my zero waste wardrobe talk as well. Um, so I'm just going to share some of that with you. Um, first of all, we discover your wardrobe. Um, what I really find is people like boundaries and challenges because um, restrictions aren't a way to oppress us. Restrictions are where we can thrive. Um, when you are kind of put into a box, you kind of get extra creative with what you can work within that box. Mm -hmm. So some challenges that are really helpful is um, Project 333 by Courtney Carver. This is where for three months, you curate 33 items in your wardrobe that you're going to wear for the next three months. This is a really good starting point for you to discover what clothing and fashion can mean for you. So for the next three months, this is 33 items. So this is minus athletic wear, um, sleepwear, the home, the home clothes don't need to count, okay. but yeah. all the going out clothes. Lah. So this includes shoes, accessories, and clothing. And, and bags. And accessories. Yes. Wow. Okay, so for so when you start this challenge, this is what you're gonna do. 33 items for the next three months. And see how you feel during that time. So a lot of it, right, like 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 is to give yourself time to give yourself time to think about all these things and how fashion affects you and how can you really enjoy the most out of your fashion without this continuous cycle of consumption because it doesn't actually make us happy. Like a lot of us, the first thing that, um, the, the thing that we're often doing is we're trying to use money to throw, like to solve our problems. So the, the problem here is I don't have anything to wear. I need something new for Instagram. Mm. So they're trying to use money to solve that problem. Mm. Oh, I will just use uh, buy a new outfit. Lah. Yeah. So that's usually how people solve their problems. But there are other ways to solve this problem of, I don't have anything to wear. And the first thing you can do is a, 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 um, um, to give yourself the time, maybe through a, a challenge like Project 333, to be able to understand how you consume fashion and to rediscover your wardrobe. There is gold hidden in your wardrobe. So what you're doing is actually shopping your wardrobe instead of shopping at Zara. Right. Yeah. Okay. In each in each of our, if, even for me not buying anything in the last three years, right? I think at the start of it, I could look at my wardrobe and think like, there is probably like five, six hundred items here. And yeah. I probably wear 10. Yeah. Right? We always reach for the same outfits each time. And we ignore all the others. So, sorry? I think um just to I mean just realistically like it is um same outfit for a season right do you do that like you always wear same season and then on the next season you find something and then you wear the same thing the next season like because yeah. you can shop for what five five years I haven't shopped yeah. for for probably three years I think when I started zero waste living yeah really I mean yeah. what about variety like I mean okay like thirty three frankly speaking that that number oh, no, 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 no. So, so, so 33, right, is for yeah. three months. Okay, right. Yeah, okay. so 33 for three months. Okay, then and after that? It is not to, to make your, you like, this is all you can ever buy, or this is all you can ever use. It is a challenge for you to understand ah, how okay. you, how your relationship with fashion. Yeah. And to also see, like, actually, if you curate, because actually 33 items is kind of like a capsule wardrobe already. But your capsule wardrobe could be 50 items, could be 80 items, could be 100 items. Each person has a different number, right? So I think we don't have to be too scared about the 33. 33 is for a short period of time to yeah. be able to put yourself through that test. And then um, during that time, understand how that you will be able to see through that experiment that we don't actually need that much. And I can still look really good. For example, my when I live abroad in when I live during for, for placements three months and I still have to go for castings every day. Yeah. It was probably less than 33 items as well. Wow. And I still looked good every day. I looked even better than I do in KL. I think in KL I dress worse because I'm a big girl for Seriously, I dress worse in KL because I had more clothes. Isn't that like ironic? <laughs> yeah, it really is. I think not I think not many people would even it wouldn't even come across people's mind that that is the fact you know that the less you have the more well dressed you will be. I right. Guess, <laughs> yeah, definitely, I don't think a lot of people would think that way. Were you? But so like you say, you know, when you are put in a box, you kind of have to be like innovative and creative. So I assume you are being sort of like 
creative with whatever pieces that you have and wearing it in ways that you never would have worn before. Yeah. Um, also, I because I'm quite like, I'm, I'm a simple girl as well, I just understood what my body preferred, like what looked better on my body. I knew I liked, crop, I knew I liked this crop top, uh, high waist skirts. So I just had two and then the jeans and then like a couple of tops to like switch in between and then a jacket to put on top to like dress up an outfit and then like heels and then boots and that's it. So it's actually less than 33 items. <laughs> and wow. I look good every day. And when you combine them in different ways, that means mm. you have, it's it's like a what's that called N N P, whatever right? Sorry, the the maths the maths thing N P. Yeah. This is the number of com out of this number you can yeah. make how many combinations, <laughs> right? So you actually have like instead of thirty three items, you actually have a hundred outfits. Amazing. How yeah. you mix mix and match will determine how you can come up with a hundred outfits, for yeah. example. So um. So that's that's one way to do it. We we it, it's a way for us to awaken our creativity again with those mm. limitations because um, a lot of consumption is actually us suppressing our creativity. We're just looking at something and we're copying it. We're looking at something and we're doing like trigger reflex. It's a trigger reflex instead of us actually um, coming out with something organically from ourselves. Right. Yeah. So it kind of inspire our originality as well. Yeah. Mm. I mean, um, so I'm just so curious. Like you've never, you've not bought anything for for three years, and so I mean, I'm pretty sure over time, over seasons, like trends, and or, or do you stick with basics? Or I mean, it, it's very interesting. <laughs> so there's trends, right? Yeah. Are uh, fleeting. So yeah. I, I I recently put myself through this. Other experience, other experience. Every time you want to buy something, stop yourself first. Give yourself like say, ten days to think about it. Mm -hmm. So I went to like a, 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 a I went to Hinbas Depot Market, okay, in Penang, which is like a, a um, a, you know, like handicrafts and stuff like that. And I found these like really cute earrings, okay, like it was the polymer clay ones. Yeah. And I was like, oh my god, this is so cute. And I'm like, am I really going to break my no buying anything new for three years with this earrings but it's really cute okay i don't want, mind i give myself one week okay and then within that one week suddenly i started seeing a lot of clay polymer earrings all over yeah. kl all over malaysia like on instagram on any everything and then i realized how quickly it became a trend and how quickly i didn't want it anymore hmm, okay so you you're because no one else had it not because no one else had had it it because it was very it it made me realize how quickly that was also going to make how that was going to make me feel if i bought it i was also going to get bored with it within a week mm, okay the yeah. same way how i saw it a few times on instagram and immediately i felt like oh, the one ready lah. yeah okay so give it some time before you give yourself time okay, yeah good... try Try not to let it be an impulse thing. Think about what actually would really add to your to your um, wardrobe. So, for example, what I've been wanting for the last few years was a secondhand leather jacket. Mm. Like until now, I'm holding out for it. I'm like, I'm not gonna buy it new, but I really want a secondhand leather jacket. <laughs> I want a really good secondhand leather jacket because that I really want. I think that would really like add to my wardrobe. Yeah. I can see myself wearing it every day and really pumping up my, my outfits with that. So in that case, did you get the the, the leather jacket? No, I'm I'm holding out. Like I'm wow. holding out because I've seen a lot of jackets, but mm -hmm. like secondhand ones, I'll be like, okay, it's not perfect yet. Because I think a lot of a lot of times when people buy, they are actually buying something they don't completely love. They're like, oh, I would look really cute in this, but do you actually really like it? Uh, mm -hmm. I think it would look make me look cute for a day lah. Yeah, I think for Instagram but, photo one time lah. Actually, they don't really I, like it one. So I've heard of this thing where they say like give uh, like you say you know give it a little thought first before buying. Then how I mean for example like this leather jacket of yours like if you like realize that over a prolonged period that you still want it, then would it would it be I I mean like what would your what would your responding would you just continue to because it is also like you say you know it's also a restriction right yeah like so set yourself uh, set yourself um certain parameters 
for mm. example i know that i know how heavy the cost of a leather boot can be i like leather boots um i know how heavy the cost is leather is incre is is very em environmentally damaging mm. just because like the the you know the the environmental impacts of a cow and blah blah blah, blah. and how far this boot had to travel from being processed everywhere across the world so okay pen and this and that until it reaches to me so how can i justify the purchase of this mm. i set myself this thing will i wear this 100 times wow okay to justify the environmental impact mm. will i wear this 100 times mm. i think more often than not when people look at an item i think maximum one time lah. yeah and then it becomes clutter in your wardrobe. So just give it more thought to it, basically. Um, so set yourself those parameters. It is actually we are on like we've got only ten minutes left. I know. By the way, <laughs> that is like point number two out of my seven oh, no. points. <laughs> We shall. I think maybe what we can do is we can quick because there are actually quite a few questions here that oh my god, okay. yeah, yeah, to be answered, which I thought would be quite uh, uh relevant to a lot of people. So there's one question here from Katie, and she asks like there are so many events here people love to dress up for the teams. Um, how do you find clothes to wear if your own wardrobe doesn't fit the team? Mm. Awesome, Kay. Um, okay, so th thank you so much for asking that question. That was perfect because it, it addresses a lot of my other points. First of all, what happens when you see a really good outfit on your friend? The first thing people say, hey, you buy where? Eh? Hey, Zara. Mm. Okay, tomorrow I go and buy. So the thing that we've lost around fashion is the sense of community. So the first thing I always do is, hey, you got a really good outfit, right? Give it six months, borrow it to yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> What, what do you want from my wardrobe? Okay, what do you want from my wardrobe? I lend to you. So what I realized when I put that out there, right, because I've been speaking about sustainable, uh, consuming fashion sustainably on my platform for a long time, yeah. um, I realized that a lot of girlfriends started reaching out to me. A, I got a wedding to go to. I really do not want to buy a dress that I'm, I know I'm going to wear one time only. Can I yeah. borrow yours? And they mm -hmm. reached out to me because they knew I was going to be open to it. They would they they you know it's like we've kind of lost that kind of flavor because we have money to solve our problems um we've kind of lost the sense of sharing that 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 we really need to bring back so first thing we can do is uh okay i uh, i got this event let me let uh, can you like let me an outfit that's mm. it yeah so and it's like shopping your own wardrobe too i mean yes shop your own wardrobe shop your friend's wardrobe um, yeah, yeah, this, yeah, so usually yeah. what you can do is size up and size down. So this is a tip that I always give, size up and size down. Because some, some girls, we're not going to be exactly the same. Or, or what, what people always ask during my talk is that, um, but what happens if all my friends is different size than me? So mm. usually in people's wardrobes, right, they have things that they kind of grew out of and also are, that are too big for them. Mm, okay. Right? There are certain things in my mm. wardrobe too tight one. Some of it too big one. Mm. So that's how you can deal with that. You can kind of find a friend that is similar-ish or use her wardrobe that is, is uh, borrow from her wardrobe the parts that are like maybe not her size one. Um, a lot of my wardrobe, so like how I've survived like this past three years in the entertainment industry is a lot of borrowing. And a lot of that borrowing, right, it's not from friends that are my size one. Mm, They're okay. usually like one size up. Really? So it's really from all the clothes that they still keep but they can't wear? Yeah, so it could be that or they could have bought wrongly because sometimes, you know, like they like buy, say, from, from like overseas. They really want this like, don't know what designer from Thailand or whatever. And they came mm. and it's like, oh my God, it's too small. But mm. I can't return it. So, yeah. so those are other situations. So I've been really blessed to have really great friends that I, I can share, that allow me to share their wardrobe. But the yeah. thing is, it is not because I'm lucky. It's because I ask. And mm. actually, right, a lot of people have guilt. How guilty do you feel about your wardrobe? You know, there are some things, right, still got tax on it, one. Right? And you're like, oh, man, like, yeah. if I give this away or throw away, also like, damn waste, eh. It's so, yeah. <laughs> so if your friend can wear, actually they are damn happy ones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so that's what I actually do. Um, um, I, my my friends are actually really excited to like, hey, uh, I've got all these clothes. Hey, you wanna, like, I I lend to you. 
Or yeah. like they'll be like, hey, this one will really, really look really good on you. Why don't you like borrow it? Yeah. Why don't or you? Like, so, yeah. Or like, yeah. you know, um, I've seen, um, uh, I, I'm not sure how, how frequent people do it here, but in UK, they do this like code swap parties. Yeah. Like, in the, yeah, like with your friends or like even with opening it up to like, you know, other people, like a community, like you say, which I thought is quite, it's quite interesting. I mean, it's quite fun because it's not something that we're used to. Thank you for thank you for bringing that up. Um, I host clothes swaps, so what I I'm, I'm a regular clothes clothes host clothes swaps okay. clothes swap host, um, and what I've noticed through my clothes swaps is that the return pe the people that return to it say yeah. that I've actually not wanted to shop. I literally do not even want to shop anymore because yeah. I know that I can just come to your next clothes swap. And yeah. I'm going to get a whole new wardrobe for free by trading in my the wardrobe that I do not want. Wow. Okay. Wait, so, so how this is this? so this okay. is sharing not with your friends but with mm -hmm. the community. So we develop a community by coming together, and we are going to swap. And wow. it is so right. enjoyable because people get to exercise the gift of giving, and not from things like oh I give people I miss have to donate money. No, this is like the stuff that you don't really want and you're going to see how it's going to bless directly someone else yeah. and how they can bless you back as well. So people get really excited at, at, at clothes swaps. Like I would see strangers because most of them, the, most of the people that come to my clothes swaps are strangers and yeah. I would see them like, oh my God, like that looks really great on you. You know what? I wore that to prom, but I can't fit into it anymore. This looks really great on you. I'm so happy you're going to take it. They get mm. excited for each other and they start like, hey, this is like a dress I couldn't wear anymore. Hey, you want or not? Yeah, I think you look, look really good. Like that's how they started connecting to each other. And yeah. it's such a beautiful thing to see. So yeah. whoever is here that's watching that wants to join my next post swap, please drop me a DM and I will mm. send you the next invite. Because post swaps, unfortunately, for the time being, I was, I was going to have one in March. Uh, I had the last one in January, so every two mm. months I have clothes swaps. Uh, yeah. But obviously, with with like no crowd, no gatherings and stuff like that, I I called it off lah. Mm. Um, but this is something I'm trying to 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 bring back in <laughs> when it's safe, yeah. but also yeah. in some in some way I want us to connect um, within our online community as well to be able to continue to swap clothes. Okay. So um sorry. So just to for those who are interested in doing that, do they just uh DM you uh DM you on your IG? Yes, please DM me on my IG. I'm uh if you want to yeah. drop my thing here, please DM me on my IG. Yeah, yes, so, Kay. Please bring your clothes to the next clothes swap. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, that's a really really good tip. And I think um for for you to create that platform, like it's really good. I think it's something interesting, something a lot of people would never have. I don't know, I've never been to a clothes store, obviously. Please come, <laughs> please come. I mean, yeah, it's interesting. And people are always, one thing also, people are always uh, looking for interesting, new, exciting things to do or ideas. And I think clothes swap, like it is, I think it, how I first um, found out about it, it was like, top 10 fun new things to do or things like that yeah and code swap was one of one of the one of the one of the points actually yeah so that's yeah it. and and what that also helps with right is donating so like what two things i always try and tell people donating isn't the answer recycling isn't the answer it isn't the answer to how we consume clothes because however we consume clothes right just because we donate them doesn't mean that it has erase any of the damage first of all fast fashion are usually like they are really not great quality and they fall apart really quickly that's why when you wash them five times suddenly yeah. they look like quite chan really right so like even yeah. the button also come out already and like there's mm -hmm. rips and yeah. stuff like that mm -hmm. and a lot of it is trendy stuff so when we donate right when it goes to charities imagine does your crop top is it going to serve an underprivileged uh, person yeah Mm. Is your hot shots going to service? Uh, you know what they, what they really need is more sensible clothes. So when yeah. we donate in fast, our fast fashion discards into into that system, right? It really mm. burdens that system. Charities are super overburdened with them because they cannot sell those items. Out of donations, right? Just say this is the amount of donations. Probably only ten percent can be sold. What happens mm. to the ninety percent? 
Yeah, we're causing it's, more problem than solving. Problem. Yeah, it actually gets burnt. Yeah. It gets thrown into the landfill. So whatever we see when we donate, right, it is not, most of the time, it's not the good that you think it is doing. So I want to kind of also speak speak for that, that donating is an answer, recycling is an answer. Yeah. So, okay. So if, if I want to do this like uh, capsule wardrobe or even doing this project like 333, right? So there are all these clothes. Where do I... Do I keep it for clothes swap or because you were saying not donating it? Yes, okay. Because, okay, if you have like t-shirts, um, pants, like sensible pants, then, okay, if you donate them, it's quite, it's likely that, that someone may be, be, be able to get good use out of them. You know, they can go to work, things like that. They can wear it at home. But for like all the other items, um, bring them for clothes swaps. Because what you're doing is also rehoming them locally. Mm, so okay. you're they, they don't have to like package them up into huge bales and like ship them to like Pakistan to be sold. Yeah. Mm. So you're rehoming them locally and you're and you're actually helping someone else um curb their own fast fashion shopping. Mm. Wow. Yeah, so it sort of go in like a full circle at the end of the day. Yeah. The, mm. There's this um there's another question there's a question about selling secondhand clothing from Vince Chan. Why are you okay. talking about that sells secondhand clothing like Jalan Jalan Japan. Okay. I guess do you, you feel better? I, I don't know. I guess some people will feel better if you're buying secondhand instead of, you know, purchasing. I would say, I, yeah, it's all the scale of relativity, right? Hmm. Secondhand over firsthand, for sure. Because yeah. there is no additional carbon footprint from production of the right. secondhand. Mm. Someone has already incurred that cost, so you don't have to. Um, the only car the carbon footprint that you would have incurred is probably the logistics of it, because mm. usually places like Jalan Jalan Japan and all the bundle stores they usually import because Malaysia's um, um, okay. How this works is oh my god, is that too long? <laughs> how this works is whatever that is donated to charities is sold. Only about say ten percent of it is sold in the local market. Ninety percent cannot be sold. So what they do is package them up and they export them to uh, another country. Um, so that's why we get our first world countries discard. So Japan and US, those discards come to Malaysia. Mm, Malaysia's yeah. discards go to like, say, Pakistan, Bangladesh. Yeah, yeah. so that, that, that's how the secondhand market works. Um, so what we're getting is all the the, the those those things there and that's the logistics that we all incur mm -hmm. so most of the things that you get in bundle store is not from malaysia one it's not malaysia second hand so would you say it is still i mean of course that is still better than buying first hand but would you say still the best would be to not so what i what i would say to that right is that f for sure second hand is better than first hand but mm -hmm. I also want people to kind of think about the way that they consume fashion because it, it like it isn't about decluttering. It's about being conscious of what you're bringing into your life and why. Because each of it has a cost. It isn't a financial cost. Financial cost is secondary. Uh, financial cost it can be very heavy, but with secondhand clothing, it can be cheap also, right? You can get five bucks also. You can buy already. Yeah. But the thing is, there's also a huge mental cost. Each thing that you bring into your life is something you have to take care of. Is something you have to deal with over and over again. For example, if you look at your table and if you see a whole bunch of crap on it, every day that you walk into that room, you actually have to deal with that crap. You have yeah. to deal with it. You have to deal with the irritation of it. You have to deal with cleaning up your table. You have to deal with wiping the dust off all these things. You have to deal with it. This is time that we are not accounting for. Same mm. with our clothing. Every time we open our clothing and we spend, say, half an hour trying to find something to wear because we can't find anything to wear because there's too many things in it, that's half an hour loss. That is a mental drain on ourselves that we are not really accounting for. Yeah. So that's why I, I really encourage everyone to... to, to Okay, first of all, uh, okay, The Minimalist is my favourite. So they have a podcast on Spotify and all other podcast platforms, um, go to their earlier stuff and try and ask yourself all those questions as well. This applies to everything in life. A lot of mm -hmm. things that we take on ourselves, it really doesn't add value to us. It adds stress. It adds mental strain. It, it And because of that, we don't get to focus on all the things that are actually important to us, like family, like connection, like our friends. Mm -hmm. 
this is all time lost that we cannot regain. But because we are already stuck in a pattern, we don't notice it. Yeah, you're just like going, like doing, doing, doing without even giving anything of that thought. Yeah. yeah. So I, guess, I, I guess like the summary of it is like changing first the mindset. I think yes. I noticed that with every question that comes up about like, oh, do you really buy this? Or oh, how do you, or like, do you, <laughs> you always go back to that, like, you know, like uh, the, the mindset, like why why you are buying it first. Do you need it first before? Yeah, that's really good. Um, if you need it, borrow it. If you need it, buy a second hand. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Kay-Tian has another question. Do you... Can anyone recommend any good thrift stores here in Malaysia? Where can I donate or buy secondhand items? Um, there are curated thrift stores that are a bit nicer to shop in. Um, so what I really like, there's a uh, there's a place called Fujiyama in Penang. So a lot of tourists when they come into town, they actually they they hit up Fujiyama because they curate the bundle store and they sell it for a bit more expensive that's true but you don't that means you don't have to like dig through so much trash mm. because when you go bundle shopping usually it's finding gold ma that they call it yeah. manilam right yeah. um so you're actually like finding gold which is really fun it is it is really fun and sometimes you will find treasure that that someone just didn't imagine mm. that it could be made into a really cool outfit like a print that really excites you and how you're going to convert that into into an outfit that really works for you. Um, locally in KL, it would be... Uh, I like shopping on... Actually, I don't like to shop anymore. <laughs> but when I do have to shop... When I do have to shop... Uh, let me think about this for a second now. Because wow. I'm not... I've gotten lazy lah. I've gotten really lazy to shop, which is really nice. It's one less thing I have to do. Yeah. Okay. Nice. First of all, Carousel is Carousel mm -hmm. is a secondhand platform that's online. Yeah. Um, yeah, what I awesome. would do with that is to find brands you already like. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if I were to say, "Hey, uh, I want a crop top," oh my god, you're gonna find like like oh eight hundred crop tops. Half of them look like shit. Okay, because they're all like fast fashion discards. Uh, rubbish in, rubbish out, right? If you yeah. fit it into the second-hand market, you fit fast fashion rubbish into it, you're, it's not going to get exciting. So that's the kind of thing that we've been experiencing in the second-hand market as well. More and more of it is fast fashion discards. So um, a lot of it is like, ugh, you know? But yeah. like, for example, what I really like to, sh I, what I used to really love doing is to op shop in Australia. But because Australia was uh, very, they protected their local economy. So they didn't let in H&M, Zara, they didn't let in the big fast fashion brands into their economy. Um, they yeah. let them in much later than even Malaysia. Like Malaysia got it first. Malaysia yeah. got Zara first. Malaysia got like mm H&M -hmm. and, 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 and all these brands first before they even went into Australia. And it's yeah. not that Australia didn't have their fast fashion brands. They did. But because of that, when you went into op shops, right, it was so exciting because it's like, there was vintage stuff. There was like good quality right. Australian made designs in the op shops. Mm -hmm. But in Malaysia, um, the good thing is because we, we import from, from US and Japan. So those are some places that you can see how unenthusiastic I am. Um, um, those, what I would say, okay, family bundle. Family bundles in Ampang. Family bundle usually gets okay from US and Japan. There, um, sometimes we can get really cool stuff there as well. But you will need to dig. Um, there is also things like there's a couple in Subang that are curated, mm. so they do sell them at a bit of a markup. So instead of five bucks, you're gonna get them at fifty bucks. But it's secondhand, and the experience of shopping is much more um, comfortable because you're gonna find like really nice stuff without having to dig through trash. So like, so, um, yeah. I, I think there's, well, there's one called OK Go in mm -hmm. Subang. OK Go, right? Locally, I know, yeah, sorry. Sorry. Is there like a, um, because like there's so much like, I guess information and all that, is there like a, is there like sort of like a, a platform or like a website or, or some things where, you know, people who want to start uh, living zero waste and like being sustainable in their fashion um, choices. But are there places, like, are, is there like a platform or website where they can like, you know, just sort of like look for, you know, these free shops or look for, yeah. 
Um, that's a really good question because I think what I'm going to do is put it up on my website. So hey, melissafan.com. Um, right. I've written about like going, um, building your own capsule wardrobe there as well. And I, what I'm going to do after this is put up uh, a list of places that you can go since it's a question that's being asked here today. Yeah. So head on over to heymelissa.com. Or... Hey, Melissa. hey, oh, sorry. Hey, Melissa. Yeah. Okay, so very quickly, um, I know that we are, we are actually way past one I'm hour. I'm so sorry. I can talk forever about, and like, re, like oh, there was like five know. other points that we didn't cover, but it's cool. <laughs> Come for my next talk. Yeah, maybe there's like a second part, a second series uh, to this. Um, but so very quickly, are there any like tips um, that you have not touched that you think would really uh, be crucial or like really, really valuable for people to take away from today's session? Um, explore your sharing community. So a couple of other uh, places I would really encourage you to check out is Bali Nothing Project on Facebook. It's a Facebook group where it's a free cycling Facebook group and it's not just for fashion. Um, it's for everything. Um, so basically everything that you need, try not to use money to solve it so mm -hmm. that because like our, our economy, our, our, not our economy, our community has all the things that you need actually. But yeah. what we do is we just keep buying more and producing more. Um, we're not using our existing resources um, as well as we should. Um, everything is almost single use. So if so, try and source them, um, borrow them from your community, from your friends. Community will be like buy nothing, probably nothing project. Go for yard sales. Go there's kabut in the park as well, like like flea markets, things like that. Places that you can really discover treasure for yourself and things that you need in your life without having to shop. Mm. That's really good. There's actually so many tips that, that was across the entire session. Um, thank you, Melissa, so much for just like sharing with us and just, yeah, like sort of opening up our minds to new stuff. And I think you have definitely, it's a, it's a perspective change, mental shift, I think, like a mind shift that you have caused also, I think it's just, sharing um yeah what you have gathered from your years of being in zero waste living um yeah so thank you so much for just this informative session and um yeah we've got like comments uh saying that some people would now do clear, clear their wardrobe <laughs> and do so yeah amazing um yeah so so much thank you so much Melissa, for joining us today um definitely looking forward to part two there's a part two coming up um, thanks so much for having me and thanks so much for listening in you guys and for the great questions yeah there you go um yeah okay i'll let you go for today oops <laughs> bye bye thanks everyone bye okay um there you go guys um i hope that that session gave you a little bit of an insight and also a different perspective to um how you can a different perspective to buying or like to even to even your day-to-day -day, um lifestyle so uh if you would like part two definitely uh make sure that you drop it in the uh, survey form that's going to appear on the comment section. Uh, drop your feedback in if you want Melissa to come back to share about other topics within the zero waste living. Um, uh, yeah, just put your feedback in and we will definitely invite her back for um, the second series. So um, next up, we will have Erin to host a uh, to um, hold a yoga workshop and then we'll end today with um, some live classical music so make sure you tune in and we'll see you at uh, 6 p.m